Hello Facebook. Hi. And welcome to our nightly live vlog. Sometimes it's here on my fan page. Sometimes it's over on my personal page. Um, this is Sherri Ann Richardson from ExperimentalHomesteader.com. And tonight we're going to be talking about five container gardening tips. Now, those of you who are experienced gardeners may already know these tips. Um, so it'll be more of a reminder for you and a chance for you to ask some questions in the comments below. Um, those of you who are new to gardening may not know these and this is definitely something that you want to know because the gardening season is almost ready to start here again, at least here in Indiana um, and in some of the colder zones in the United States. So the five tips we're going to talk about is drainage, good soil, water, how to plant that container. It's called a thriller, filler, and spiller and how to choose the right plants for the pots and not overcrowd. So again, we're gonna go step by step. If you have questions, please put them in the comments section and I will try to address those. So the first one is drainage. It is very, very important that all of your containers have really good drainage, okay? Um, if you have a container without drainage, then you need to put some drainage holes in it. Don't just use it like it is um, and there are special drill bits that you can get if you have a uh, glass or ceramic containers and you want to use those but they don't have the holes already pre-drilled um, we have done that and it is super super easy what is that for <laughs> I was suppressing a yawn actually oh okay Sorry. it's okay <laughs> um the point is to have fun, right? Right. Okay. Um, but good drainage, I just can't say enough about it. Very, very important. The exception to the rule is plants that grow in water because, of course, you don't want those drained. But seriously, good drainage is the key. The second thing is you have to start with good soil. If you don't have good soil and it either drains too fast or not fast enough, you're going to have plant roots that either dry up or drown. You don't want either one of those. I make my own soil mixture. I use uh, peat moss, vermiculite, and perlite. I'm going to say it's about, what, half peat moss, maybe a quarter vermiculite, maybe a quarter perlite, and that may be a little heavy on the perlite and vermiculite, but I mix it into the peat moss. So you can easily see that both are there. Okay, that gives me a really light soil mixture that my plant roots can go, grow through. It gives me uh, water holding capabilities. And since we're talking container gardening, while we're talking about water holding capabilities, there are special crystals that you can buy that you can mix into your soil that will help hold the water in the container. Your looks tonight, Jeff. <laughs> um, okay. So that brings us to water. Now, how often do you water a container? That's going to depend on a lot of things. It's going to depend on the plant. It's going to depend on if it's in sun or shade. It's going to depend on the climate. In the summertime, plants in full sun. It's nothing to have to water those once today. Okay, if the plant's in shade, it may not dry out quite as much. So you need to learn to look at your plant and you need to understand how to tell if your soil is moist, dry. Okay, a good way is to just take your finger and stick it down in the soil. Okay, if you can feel water in there just floating around, then clearly you've got too much water in your plants. If you bring your finger out and it looks all muddy, that soil is too wet. If you bring your finger out and everything falls off of it, that soil is too dry. So what you want is to stick your finger in and bring it out and not have your finger caked with soil, but just have a little bit that kind of sticks to it. Another way is to grab the soil in your hands and just squeeze it like this. If water drips out of that, it's definitely too wet, okay? You don't want to see the soil pulling away from the side of the pot unless it's something like a cactus that's supposed to be a little more on the dry side. But normally, you want that soil to just look like, you know, it's going edge to edge on your pot and it's nice and 
moist but not wet so that's the key moist but not wet again you can use all kinds of uh, I know there's water retaining crystals there's probably other products that you can use in your containers um, to help hold the moisture in there is also container gardening soil now I have not used that because I'm very much about organic and I have not done my research to find out what's in that so you might want to do that especially if you're growing edibles okay the next tip is your thriller filler and spiller every good container arrangement needs these three things the thriller the filler and the spiller and I'm gonna tell you what those are okay the thriller is that big plant in the center that just grabs your attention and says hello look at me okay the filler is the plant that's going to go a little bit underneath of that and kind of fill in the soil, you know, in the center. So you're not looking at soil, you're looking at plant. And the spiller is the plant that's going to spill over the sides of your pot. Okay, like I said, every good container arrangement is going to have all three of those. Now, I know there's going to be times when you're just going to have one plant in that container, but if you're actually doing an arrangement, get that thriller, filler, and spiller in. Make sure they are compatible with one another because you don't want to put one in that needs shade, one in that needs soil, and then, you know, I mean soil, sun, mm -hmm. sorry. <laughs> I'm still thinking back on the soil. So you need to either choose all shade loving plants or all sun loving plants when you do this. Don't mix and match because you're going to have plants that die and they're just not going to live. And then you're going to be saying, well, what did I do? Well, you just had the container in the wrong place. Now, an exception are just plants that can take part sun, part shade. Those you can mix and match. So read your plant labels, see what kind of growing environment they prefer. Don't put plants that want to be dry with plants that are going to be wet. You know, you have to match the growing conditions up to have a successful container gardening. All right, last tip, choose the right plants for the right pot and don't overcrowd. Okay, do not choose a three-foot plant and put it in a four-inch pot. This is not going to work. Um, I know that sounds really funny, but some people really don't know. So, just like with a vase, when you pick a vase, you want your big flower to be one and a half times taller than the vase itself. When you choose a container... Think along the same lines, okay? If you're growing a tomato, you need a five-gallon pot. That's, that's bottom line, smallest that you need to have, a five-gallon pot. So think about this when you're choosing your plants that you're going to put in and think about how much root room they're going to need because you don't want your plant container to be all roots. You want some soil in there. Um, you also, I'm going to say, top dress your uh, containers with compost at least once a month in the summertime because what you have to realize about containers, you're watering every day, every other day, and you're washing all those nutrients right out of the bottom of the pot. And now I'm going to tell you a secret for those of you that have tuned in. Um, if you have questions, feel free to leave them. The secret that a lot of nurseries use to have those great big lovely plants that look so lush and so beautiful they put one inch yes one inch of osmocote in the bottom of their container and then they plant the plant water every day if you do that I'm just telling you because otherwise way too much fertilizer and if you're not washing all that excess out you're going to have a problem but that is seriously how they do it and that's why if some of your plants die and you flip that soil out and you have all these little round ball like things that's on the bottom of it and you're thinking what's that that's osmocote that's it's a time release fertilizer um the only time that i do that is when i'm growing something like brugmansa which is one poisonous, so there's no way I'm going to eat it. There's no way I'm going to grow any other plant in that container. And it is a heavy, heavy feeder. Otherwise, I'm all about organics. And even, I will tell you, even when I do use Osmocote, I am top dressing with composted horse manure. It just, it gives that little bit of extra. I am still foliar feeding. 
because container plants can really use up the nutrients faster than what you think. So um, that was my five container tips for tonight. And I'm not seeing any questions. Um, if you have some, please leave them in the comments because I will be looking and I will be um, answering those questions. This video will be up on YouTube tomorrow night at 5 o'clock for those that want to see the whole replay and don't want to watch it on Facebook. And speaking of YouTube, at 10 p.m. tonight, we're going to be over on YouTube Live and I'm going to be giving you five maple sap tips. So thanks for watching, guys. Have a great night.